Angels of Back to Earth Creations, and welcome to 2022. Uh, I'm a couple days late, but that's fine. <laughs> it's our first live stream of the year. Um, first anything of the year, actually, because we didn't have any tutorials or anything like that prepped or put together. And we were taking a little bit of, like, a an unplugged holiday to try to just uh, decompress a little bit after the holidays. Very happy birthday. Oh, my God. To our friend Christina, honey butt, honey cat. Hey, Christina. I hope you're having an awesome birthday. <laughs> Wait, what's happening? Huh? <laughs> I'm already rushing on another video. Oh my gosh. <laughs> hey, Lydia Beth. <laughs> I hope everybody's new year is off to a really great start. Hmm. Ah, hey, Holly. Hey, Christina. Hey, Sabea. Hey, Lenora. Hey, Angie. You were the first to get to come in. <laughs> um, so I don't really have a plan for today. Um, we were going into such like my RPMs, y'all, were going at 110% um, prior to Christmas and just like doing all of our auctions and shop updates and everything. And so doing our unplugged holiday was really nice. But now I'm like kind of aimless and just I feel like floaty and I'm like I'm not really entirely certain. Like I, I, I feel like I'm at the foot of yet another mountain that I need to figure out how to climb and I'm not entirely certain how to get started. But we have a lot of stuff to do this year, a lot of stuff to keep us busy and to get started on. So, also, I still have my tree up because <laughs> uh, it finally snowed in our neck of the woods. So it is just now actually feeling kind of Christmassy. So I'm like, I'm going to be tacky and leave my tree up. Because when it's like cold like this, that's when I need it the most. It was 70 on Christmas Day. Like, that's not when I need a Christmas tree. <laughs> Yeah, and it got cold enough that we our cold water line froze, even though we had it dripping. Fortunately, we still had hot water, and it did loosen back up today, so that's good. <laughs> Just, Yippee for the tree! Yeah, I like it. It makes my bitter little heart happy. <laughs> right on, KJ. Yeah, I like leaving my tree up until, like, I put it up, we put it up really early this year. I normally don't put it up until, like, December 20th, roundabout there, and then I leave it up until almost valentine's day but that's because it's cold and awful outside <laughs> hey elijah we're doing really well how are you doing ah oh, tasher says want some snow i'll ship you a bunch no we got some that's plenty <laughs> that's more than enough which you know says our tree is still up right on don't get excited something coffee this way comes thanks honey that's why i was running a little bit late today i actually prepped my own coffee um, all right on KJ. Fluffy Kitty says, hey, we went to Florida for Christmas and came back home to snow. Ooh, right on. Well, I hope y'all had a good trip. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get me some of this real quick. Okay, so we have quite a few things on our plate for 2022. The biggest ones are, um, just trying to maintain um, our business and see what the year brings. And so we are going to be resuming this coming week our regular tutorial schedules. So we'll be uploading new tutorials every Thursday and Sunday and we will be having premieres on those. We'll still be uploading them at noon um, and they're always available for the replay. Um, and then what else are we doing? Just like... Oh, no. Okay. He wasn't chewing on his bone all day until the stream. And now all I can hear is his teeth grinding on the bone. So, um, let's focus for a sec. We're going to be doing our Thursday and Sunday tutorials at noon with the premieres. We are going to be continuing our Monday shop updates. We're going to be continuing our Friday weekly live streams from 5 to 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. I never made this month's calendar. I need to do that. Um, as well as we'll be doing our after parties. And then we will also be doing... Um, we're not certain yet if we're going to be having monthly auctions or monthly craft along a funds where we kind of like you can put in pre-orders and then we make it during yeah, the video. He says definitely not auctions, so <laughs> never mind on that. We hadn't really talked about it. I'm just kind of thinking out loud. Um, and then we also are reintroducing vending 
into our lineup and y'all we are starting from scratch so we have left just the stuff that either didn't get sold or didn't get paid for who's in my front yard oh okay um <laughs> sorry <laughs> so distractible um yeah we have any of the hey bella ann we have the stuff that either didn't find a home or didn't get paid for left over from our auction and that's kind of gonna be what's starting us but we need to prep hard to fill up a booth by anime st louis which is april 22nd to 24th of this year so it's time to get cracking we're going to be focusing just on jewelry um to start with and then i don't know if two months in we've made all the jewelry that we need that's probably not going to happen but just in case um blah, 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 then then we'll start working on costumes but we're just going to focus for now on jewelry and then see how that goes so jennifer says hey jennifer is there anything in particular that you need to make ready for your first sales event well literally everything we're most ahead on earrings right now because randy like went through we went through our entire stock of charms and we made just some really simple little charm earrings but i wanted to share that's what we'll work on today let me get this flipped around like so i'm gonna need to clean off a little bit of my <laughs> for whatever you need an extra set of hands i was gonna do a tutorial um on doing hand casts for making like your own um like palm reading creepy halloween prop that like glows and had like a, an eye on it and stuff but then we lost all of the footage whenever i dropped the external hard drive so these hands have just been floating around my house but if you ever get lonely you can just like hold hands with yourself be like it's okay Vaughn. <laughs> it's been very lonely <laughs> do, do, do. you can tell the cat laid on my apron Sabaeus is hands what you doing? Where are you coming? Looking. Come oh, back. for your bracelet? <laughs> I still got it over here. <laughs> oh, and so these are, y'all remember these from last year? Feels like I haven't seen you guys. <laughs> oh, Katrina says, I feel that my first show of the year is mid-March. Got a lot of inventory to make. Right on. Time for extra hand miming, right? So I still need to work on, we've worked on literally nothing since getting home. We're trying to kind of get the house in order. Um, we did a little bit of rearranging. This is one of our custom pieces. Our good friend, Billy Tackett, who's a very talented artist, uh, got this coffin nail and he with his initials engraved on it. And he's like, hey, can you wire wrap it for me? And I'm like, yeah. I'm actually going to try um, doing some metal smithing with it to make like a little silver bezel, but we'll see how that goes. Okay. Ooh, Four Agreements is a very good book. I, re -re I try to reread it every year, but. Ooh, that's some good hot coffee. Okay, actually, I'm going to be using the tablet. So, let's see. In Procreate. Ah, that's, that's another thing that we're doing this year, is we are still continuing on with starting um, Compass Rose Planner Co. The group is now up on Facebook. Uh, we have a Facebook group for the planner uh, company and a big part of why we're starting another company is I wanted to do a video series here on YouTube on our main channel of, um, let's focus with our brain for a moment, of how to start a business um, and the different things that we're going through and having to deal with and like figure out because it's been it's been a while since we started a business about 15 years and I wanted to see kind of what things have changed what things have grown what has stayed the same um, and share that process with you guys and I have to say it was a lot easier in my memory than what it has been in reality so this is in the past I've just done this on very large like a really big sketch pad and just did a little bit of like a brain map but I figured this year I can just take it with me everywhere and so we have, I wanted to focus on types of jewelry that we'd be making. Uh, so we have bead strung, wire wrapped, lamp work, fused glass, chain mail, and leather just for jewelry purposes. So I'm kind of going through and there are designs that Randy and I used to make in like production mode whenever we were making for the booth that it's like, okay, these are things that we'll do. So we started with 
just rings, our finger rings. There are spiral nest rings, no bead spiral, no bead wave, which we actually have tutorials on those two, a half Persian 3-in-1 with an 8mm bead, a Byzantine with a 6mm bead, a half Persian 3-in-1 eye ring set on adjustable base, and I think we're going to be doing tutorials on all of these as well, even if we have already done a tutorial on it in the past. Um, groovy adjustable rings we may not revisit those because those are very recent like in the past year tutorials herringbone rings simple one bead simple three bead and then I i'd like to try doing a copper and silver braided ring where i braid three wires together and then solder the ends so now next i'm kind of looking at necklaces so let's think also what brush was i using for this I think I was using brush pen. Um, with our necklaces, we could do... Oh, that's another... Well, that'll be a pendant that we do. We can do a Celtic star inline. We can do the Persian bauble. I don't like this one. What's going on? Um, that's where the Celtic star, and then it's not hanging down, it actually has the chain split in the center and it's just coming off the shoulders. And then we can do this Celtic star drop, where it's the Celtic star joined by a bead to the rest of the necklace. I like that. Uh, I think we should make both. I agree. Okay, so that should reduce the stabilization. Um, and then we can do a Celtic star drop. The Celtic bubble in line single, which what I mean by that, and I can actually show y'all, is so the Celtic star is a chainmail weave that has like it's basically 15 rings joined together. We have a tutorial on it, but um an inline is it would be joined off of the shoulders like this. Whereas the drop is it would have a bead and then it attaches to um, more Celtic visions weave. And those are beads with more chainmail. Um, and then another bead and then just the chain coming off to the sides. So that's that one. Are you not? Are we not erasing now? Okay. That makes sense. There we go. So I guess the first thing to do is, I'll keep writing things down. Oh, we could do the herringbone. Anytime that I write drop is where, so like the herringbone drop is actually a uh, herringbone weave on both sides. Uh, yeah, joined with... Randy's got a good memory on this. Joined with a Mobius flower with another herringbone. Slightly larger bead. And this one would be a 10 millimeter. And these ones would be 8 millimeter followed by 6 millimeter. And then with just a 4 millimeter bead link. So, okay. Yeah. I think that'll... Boop, boop. Let's start with, so this is, I'm gonna, <laughs> I was gonna map out the entirety of everything that we're going to be doing for like jewelry wise and then as we make it we can mark it off because each of these, like the Celtic star inline, we would go through and pick out like, um, usually I have at least rose quartz, hematite, tiger's eye, amazonite, and let's say labradorite. Um, and then I would make two of those necklaces in each of those gemstone types. So whenever I'm going and like shopping for beads, I'll know that I need to get 10, 8, 6, and 4 millimeter in at least those five gemstone types. Um, oof, okay, that's fine. Let's start with, let's make some no bead spiral rings. Ooh, and I have not been keeping up with comments. Let's get back to that. Okay, Ooh. <laughs> how do I make the live chat just take up the whole page? There we go. 
Oh, just a quick visit. Hey, P.S. I don't think we have shipped your winnings yet for the giveaway, though I can't recall. Right on. Hey, Lauren Ashley. Oh, hey, Tashers. <laughs> okay, give me just a sec. I'm going to grab some wire, and we're going to get right to wrapping. I think, I think we're going to do these in 20 gauge. Oh, that's 28 gauge. That's not going to work at all, I don't think. Okay. I'm going to have to order more wire again. Ooh, I definitely could, Jennifer. That's a really good idea. I actually wanted to make a mold from the casts. That way I could make hands out of resin because those plaster cast hands do not hold up well. Hey, Jax's mom. Hey, Pro. How are y'all doing? Oh, it helps so much when y'all do the, uh, the, where you do the at Yvonne Williams and it highlights it in orange. Okay, so to make these, I'm going to need a ring mantle and some wire snips and quite possibly some round nose pliers. This is officially my first time wire wrapping in 2022. <laughs> and I'm going to be starting with, let's do 12 inches of wire first. And again, this is a 20 gauge. Ooh, Lauren Ashley says I got some great cabs in the last booty box. Always doing an amazing job. Oh, I'm so glad you like them. Where are you getting your wire from? Parawire still? They're always sold out. When I try to order silver and large spools and titanium entirely, always sold out. Yeah, um, yeah, we still get our wire from Parawire. Um, you may want to send them an email and see if there's a way that you can get signed up for, I don't know if they have it, um, because we order in such bulk quantities, um, might be part of the reason why they're sold out, uh, because we send out pair of wire in our booty boxes as well. What's up, Randy? <laughs> okay, and so I'm just wrapping the, let's see if we can zoom in a bit for you. You don't really need to see my coffee. Yeah. Yeah. So this 20 gauge titanium is quite old and it's been much softer what I've gotten from Parawire since then. But it just seems like it's been just this one spool is pretty stiff, but that's okay. And I am just making a little rosette. And usually whenever we make rings for in the booth, I'm going to make a couple at size 7, size 9, and size 11. Uh, so that would be two, four, six rings in this one metal tone. And so from here, there we have our little ring. Hey, Nancy, how's it going? Uh, hey, Organic. Sorry, I have not been good at keeping up with... Um, comments today officially tired of being cold right Drex I'm still I'm not gonna lie I'm still enjoying it it's beautiful outside uh to like right now I'm watching the sunset out the window and it's just gorgeous um speaking of sunset hey Wendy I was gonna ask who's doing the chickens would, would you put my chickens to bed for me nobody needs fed or watered I took care of that earlier <laughs> And they miss you. I'm sure. Hey, hey, Rainbow Zebra. How's it going? Hey, Terry. Hey, Nancy. We are. We're making rings today. We are working on pro produce? Products. We're making some art to sell in our booth. Now, we have an option here that we could add an additional spiral onto the side. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> brock, brock. <laughs> so I'm going to sniff a sniff snip about a half inch. I'm just going to put that off to the side. Mm -hmm. Oh no, Kelly! <laughs> she says, I feel pained. I've not received a hello. Well, that's because I am thoughtless <laughs> and not good at juggling just yet. I'm going to have to get back into the stride of it. So let's make one with a, oops, with a spiral 
Oh, well, thank you, Obsidian. It was not always so. And honestly, I'm surprised that you'd say because I feel like this is so messy. But that's okay. We'll figure it out. Now, personally, I love the way the little spirals on the sides look. But uh, they're a little bit of a nightmare for if you have, like, longer hair. But they might be exactly somebody's cup of tea. So, got sick heat or crash. Still hope you have my earrings. Sorry, I'm between. Oh, right on. So, it's a little bit smaller than a seven, but we can always stretch it back out. So, there is one ring. Yeah, not quite. <laughs> and now we will do another. And 12, in and 12 inches <laughs> seemed perfect. So uh, we'll do one more at 12 inches for size 7. I'm actually going to go up to about 14 inches for... Um... Oh, I have not witch and gnome. That might be worth some Googling. But for the size nine rings, I'm going to use 14 inches. Or so. And then I am going to cut two more. Aw, uh, thanks, Nancy. I really over, like, I was going to do dishes to, like, kind of clean up the edges of my nails. But, because I paint them like a barbarian, I just kind of blob the and then put it on my nails so <laughs> do what I don't understand what that Chile oh okay <laughs> happy new year y'all no it has been like super extra skunky for the past couple of days like well the house got sprayed again too you know bad as that. Hmm. Oh, I'm using 20 gauge wire. Though this works really well in 18 gauge as well. Oh no. Well, I hope you stay safe and warm, Rainbow. Hey, Linda. I missed y'all as well. Okay, so we're going to do this again. And coming around to the center of our wire, bending a little bigger this time at the size seven. Ooh, these ones I got on Amazon. They are glitter line beetle on, maybe? But they are teeny tiny. Teeny tiny. Okay. And I'm trying to make sure that my wires don't cross. <laughs> right on, Danielle. What you reading? And then I'm just making a little bit of where the wires are bent off into each direction. And on this ring, I am not going to do the side spirals. What up, baby? Some rainbows in the blizzard, the other rainbows got the AC on. All right. <laughs> Okay, so now clearly we don't need as much wire if we're not doing the side spirals. Does it help to go a size or two larger to keep from having to stretch it back out? It can. Now, whenever I'm making custom sized rings for folks, like if I knew for a fact that I needed this to be a size seven, I'd start working on it at about a seven and a quarter or seven or seven and a half or seven and three quarters. Um, just to, so that, cause you can get some distorting whenever you stretch things back out. Like it might put your spirals off skew or something. So, <laughs> um, but these I'm making for in the booth. So, um, <laughs> right on zebra. Honestly, same. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, Sherry, I hope everybody's okay. 
Is this more, more of a rose than a spiral? Right on. Yeah, these are definitely, I think of them as like a rosette more than anything. And depending on how you like stack the, um, the wires, it could look much flatter or much more rosette, rosette, rosish. <laughs> okay. And so from here, I'm actually going to use the box of my hinge of my uh, pliers to just smush that down. So there's no pokey outy bits. And so that's the difference between those two styles. And again, I don't know if these are coming out blurry or... All right on obsidian. But yeah, I kind of like, I don't know, I don't know which one I like better, honestly. Right on. Katrina says, I make these with gemstone beads at 10 a pop. They're my best sellers at every show. Right? You definitely could add a bead. And I think we'll be showing how to do that possibly next. I was going to try to get um, six in each metal tone made. Um before moving on to the next design and I wanted to share this process with you guys because I realize it's probably not the most like pow wow pop entertaining but this is legit how we go through and make jewelry for our booth so it really helps me I like having all of the wire cut because then like oftentimes um whenever we're like driving to an event I'll have a bunch of wire prepped that way I can just have it in like a shoe box uh, sitting in my lap in the car and then just make stuff on the road without having to like need the full arm span length to be able to you know measure out my wire and stuff so again just making that little bit of a of a twist in the center ah thanks hey Amisha how's it going Ooh, right on zebra Mmm, twisting the two wires right on. That's good thinking. And then if you start, it starts getting stacked, again, you can use that flat side of your pliers to um, kind of squeeze it down a little bit. So now I'm making these ones at a size 9. And I'd like to put a little bit of a training bend in it first. Misha says, pretty good. I just started junk journaling. Ooh, right on. I'm doing pretty good. Doing really good, actually. Um, today I will be recording day 161 of a year of yoga, which I'm very excited about. Um, ooh, you know, something else that we could do, too. Oh, I'm going to have to do a tutorial on this. Um, is include a little bit of an itsy bitsy spiral around the ring band so there's that one and then we can stabilize it too Nancy says, do you ever use a vise to hold the ring mandrel? Um, kind of. On my metalworking desk over here, you can see I have a steel mandrel kind of plugged in to one of the holes. Just like that. But that's kind of the closest I get uh, to doing stuff like that but it's it's not a bad idea at all if i had something stable to attach a vice to hey jenny how's it going making the ornaments my tree will have some this year right on and then now doing the band like this kind of removes a lot of possibility for um being able to resize it but I think that'll be okay. Mm 
Huh? I'm trying. Yeah. There's no amount of new year, new me that can make me actually stay in frame. <laughs> Oh, did I? Yeah. Baby, that's my superpower. Just spirals for days. <laughs> a miniature books read ornament. Ooh. Cherry says, it's a busy spiral when around the wire band. Yes, it did. It surely did. Okay. Oop. Throw my tires. Mm -hmm. Oh, very cool. So, Marty, the way that I normally would resize a ring like this, yeah, I've got one over here, um, is this is how it looks with a bead, by the way, um, is I would split the band and then I would come in and grab it with my round nose pliers and twist up and it makes that little bit of like a wiggle shape. And then I would do that same thing on the other side, twisting up. You can see it's all a kilter now, but we just bring it in. And then I would stretch it back out to size it up just a little bit more. Now this is something that I only do, not quite necessarily as a last resort, but for if we're in our booth and um, even if it's okay with the client, um, and I don't have the wire to rewrap a whole nother one, uh, I would do it like this. But normally I can just kind of stretch it a little bit um, from being like just wrapped like this. I'd put it on the ring mandrel and either tap with a nylon hammer to flatten the spirals a little bit that can open up some more space. But that's one of the ways that I go about resizing our rings. I still have that blue mandrel. It's a blue plastic one with like a groove in it. And I think it's either lost to the sands of time or it's in a bin somewhere for whenever we're teaching. Um, I very much prefer my metal ones. Um, though I do also have a black plastic one too. Ah, uh, right on, Cherry. So yeah, just making another little... Another little spiral on this side. And you know, this might actually be a really great way of doing the three spiral ring because my, my qualm with this one is that that spiral gets caught on stuff. And I think by doing it this way, having it be an inline itsy bitsy, uh, spiral, then binding the end down, we wouldn't have that problem. Hmm. Okay. And this one isn't perfectly symmetrical, but some people may love it just because of that. But I wanted to experiment with doing a very small spiral as well. Mm -hmm. Hey Beth, how's it going? Yeah, no worries, Marty.
that is very cool. Yeah, I definitely like the small spiral as opposed to the larger one for on the side. And again, if I were coming through and I wanted to size this down, it was supposed to be a size 9, but adding that additional uh, depth, like you can see all that open space. So let me grab, oops, let me kick the tripod first off. Okay, loud noises, y'all. And I'm using the nylon head side. Okay. Now the main thing, we actually, let's go ahead and use the... is we can get some skewing. Things will go a little wonky, um, but we can always kind of just smush it back. Smoosh, there it goes. <laughs> and what size did that bring it up to? Still not a size nine, I don't think. No, that just brought it up to a size eight. So that's something to keep in mind if you're adding a whole bunch of spirals and stuff is, um, but yeah, I think that one's pretty cute. And I think we may, maybe one of our first tutorials of the year is making a um a wreath ring maybe or a spiral ring or I don't know I like it it feels very elvish okay so now I'm gonna cut another wire since that one kind of deviated from the formula a little bit because I don't discourage deviating from the formula when I'm crafting in like production mode but I still want to fulfill at least the minimum of the, you know, stuff that's sticking to the formula. Okay, so let's do this again. Mm -hmm. and if you hear our heater roaring, it's because I think it's like, what, 12 degrees outside? Though it might have heated up. It might have gotten up to freezing. Oh, I'm sorry if I'm missing questions. No, <laughs> just at Bond. Where do you get your half round wire? I get it from Parawire. Um, and I actually have um, a video here on the YouTube channel showing how I shop for Parawire if you have a hard time finding it. Uh, this is not half round, so that would be really pretty. This is just 20 gauge regular old round wire. <laughs> hey, serious. Ah, Sherry says, I never thought about hammering on my mandrel. Oh, yeah. That's what made me change from... Um, using just my plastic mandrels because the plastic mandrels are kinder to your stones if you're using uh, beads and so I wanted something that wasn't just going to like scratch my stones up there we go but for actually getting to hammer on it I definitely go with my aluminum uh, and then I have my stainless steel one for torching on So honestly, I've never really torched on it, but it should be torch safe technically, though I don't know really know why I'd need to. Just coming through, doing that first little, um, <laughs> Sherry says, I wish I were as comfortable in my skin as you are to be able to do yoga in front of everybody. I'm going to try your lessons. Ah, uh, well, I'm actually, um, I don't know. I've fully embraced the potato life. Um, it's. I don't know. I, I think having y'all be so nice to me all the time definitely helps, but it's also, I started my yoga journey, the 100 days of yoga, to, so that I could learn to be kinder to myself and, you know, to feel pride in myself and not just a, you know, dissatisfaction at this or that. Um, it's almost like going to couples therapy, but for me and my body. Okay, my wire got a twist in it, so I'm going to undo that little twist. So it can look really good twisted as well, just because this is the way I've been doing it does not mean it's the only way, not by a long shot. So yeah, it's sitting pretty comfy at a size 9. Fellow potato here. Hey, taters. <laughs> Ooh, that's very nice, Kelly. Okay, so we'll do this one, yeah, just for the sake of having it be done. We'll do this one as the single spiral instead of the tri-spiral. 
definitely use some fresh wire snips. The tips of these ones don't quite cut the way that they used to could. I'm just smushing that so there's no little pokey bits. And if I were using bare copper or sterling, we could actually, um... <laughs> You, you do not have to refrain from Lord of the Rings potato quotes, Sabea. <laughs> We're all saying them in our heads anyways. Um, Post-Christmas craft box question. Has anyone started using their craft box contents? I sure hope so, because we're fixing to have more of them. All right on, Kelly. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, just the little craft boxes? Oh, the small ones. Yeah, the small ones. So there's that one. I forget what we were saying. Okay. So let's do the three spiral one now. So yeah, you can definitely see how um, just having one design, this one design done in four metal tones. Actually, let's do it in five. Five is, five is a nice round number, right? Where in the heck is... There it is. Okay, so we'll have some in bare copper as well. So, that's 30 rings in this one design. Just because I'm making it in three sizes, two variations, and five metal tones so you don't have to have um used to i we have this mentality that it's like well if we're going to make something we need to make you know just one of it that way it's an original piece and then you know move on to the next design and it's like well that's beautiful for like setting up a gallery or something uh it gets really challenging to make you know 200 unique designs and even then you only have 200 pieces of jewelry which if you're doing back-to-back -back shows like how it can get if you're doing anybody who's done like a vendor circuit or um for conventions or craft shows or festivals or anything like that uh, gosh, at our at our busiest, we had nine weekends consecutively that we had maybe two, three, if we were lucky, days off in between. Um, and that is not a whole lot of time to be able to get more product made. So we wanted to go in with multiples and duplicates of all of our designs. Oh, a craft box is uh, anytime I have a broken piece of jewelry that I'm too lazy to fix or I spill beads and don't feel like I'm sorting them, or uh, dud glass cabochons, or dud resin, or polymer clay, or anything like that, that it's like if it just didn't come out the way that I wanted, or, you know, just something of the sort, or I resized a bracelet for somebody in the booth so we have like an inch and a half of a chainmail weave of a ring color that I can't get anymore, I throw it into my crap bin. Um, or kids aren't supposed to watch our channel by the way our fuck it bucket <laughs> that is just like i cannot deal with this right now i just put it into my fuck it bucket um or more you know uh family friendly the crap box and then i just fill up like a quart bag with stuff and then put it on our website for uh you know if you like sorting through crap i guess <laughs> Like, I think the description on the website whenever the listing is up is that it is literal garbage. So, no returns. You get what you get. <laughs> but, hey, Penny Van. But, no, it's, like, straight up. Because sometimes, like, it might be a half-finished, like, bead piece that the the bead floss has tangled up for the last time. And I'm going to set it on fire. And instead of setting it on fire, I just put it up for, like, adoption in a crap box. So... <laughs> yeah. Ah, Sabaya says I have one of those buckets too. Holds all kinds of laundry, right? <laughs> hey, Scarlet. <laughs> okay, so this one is going to have, and let's do the little inline spirals and then bind the ends off. Just because, just because the other way is the way I've always done it, does not mean that it's not a good idea to mix it up a bit. Rainbow Zebra says I got some really lovely treasures in my crap boxes. Well, I'm glad you. I'm glad you think so. Like I'm glad you got them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
and a lot of the times like we used to have dud boxes but we just put them in our crap boxes now the duds so like for our resin it might be uh almost perfect but maybe the resin capping on the polymer clay didn't come all the way to the edge and so it's just stuff that it doesn't quite meet our quality control but it's not you know it's still too nice to just throw away um So that's what we do with that stuff. Ooh, yeah. I like that. I like that a bunch. Um, KJ, right now I'm using 20 gauge, but I also really like this design in 18 gauge as well. I've never made it in 16 gauge, though I bet that'd be really nice. That would be a hearty, hearty ring. Ooh, I have coffee. Cheers, y'all. Thank you so much for joining us here again today. I'm looking forward to sharing another crafty year with you guys. Hmm. Kelly says, is it me? When I use 20 gauge, I feel like it is too soft. Um, it, I think it could depend a lot on what you're using it for. Because there are some applications that I'm like, no way. That's I would not use a 20 gauge for it. Like for core wires, for weaving, or things like that. But um, even for stuff like this, it, uh, I don't know. <laughs> ah, for rings? Um, possibly. Hey, Danielle, how's it going? Because this one, you can see, it's really biting into my fingers and everything. So, um... Okay, let's get this. And then you can even, if you wanted to stretch it down, let's go ahead and... There we go. So it's got a little bit of a stretch to it. Not by much, though. Usually I can only stretch it by about a half size. But yeah, again, if it were bare copper or sterling, I could come through with a file and just file that down. Oh, that's a good idea, Sherry. Uh, bye, Linda. Thanks for hanging out. I like that a bunch and it should not snag because those loops are now completely closed. Hmm. Oh, right on Jennifer. So there's our two size nine ishes. And now we get to move on to our best selling size. And that's typically our size 11s move best because they're the easiest to size down to just about any <laughs> ring size with the technique I showed just a little earlier. Ooh, right on, Danielle. That sounds nice. Well, I'm just having some... <laughs> I was going to be like, black coffee with some creamer and sugar in it, <laughs> which technically, technically the truth. Um, but no, it's just some sugar-free creamer. Ooh, and the sunshine flexing on us. <laughs> Ooh, oh, that's cool, Sherry. That's a brood on rings. Do what, honey? I hope not. It's dark. Yeah. Well, Linda is being like telling us about she's going to go hang her laundry out on the line, oh. <laughs> which is like enviable. Um, ooh. Casey asks, do you bring your ring mandrel with you to shows to resize your rings? I do. And as we get our, I actually have to show you guys something. I'll be right back. Okay, prepare to pretend to be impressed. <laughs> so, 
Let me see if I can do the zoomy outie and bring the camera up because here we have our very good friends with World is Strange has hooked us up, have hooked us up with this awesome bag, y'all. And this is going to be my craft along bag for whenever we're going to shows um, because I want to be able to bring everything that I need with me and of course be on brand, but I wanted to be able to color it in with markers if I wanted. Um, so it has our logo on it, but it's also, um, very flat that way I can put pins and stuff on it if I want as well and it's got this front pocket that goes quite deep and then velcro on there on the front with this front pouch that has check out these pockets y'all I think this is going to be where I stick my pliers which I'm going to have point down so I'm not like stabbing myself but I've ne like I've been like just hankering for some like good organization for a while now and I think this is going to be just the thing to take care of us okay what am I getting snagged on the pointy tip yeah nope it's my pliers not the bag there we go so I may actually make some formed like a uh, pocket protector so the pointy tips of some of my pliers don't get snagged on stuff but I'm going to use this front pouch to store all of my pliers. And, okay, shameless self-promotion as well. We're going to be selling these bags upon our website because I'm a shameless capitalist. Um, but, yeah. And so I think, do the pockets get shallower? Yeah, the pockets get shallower, but that's okay. That'll be all right. <clears throat> It still holds them. But yeah, so we'll put all of our pliers there in that front pocket. And I think, and then it still has some loose space so I could go like, boom, hammer. Yeah, it'll poke out a little bit, but that'll be all right. The main thing is this. Did I just, yeah, I'm throwing rings everywhere. Our main pocket here has this flap. And then just all of this space, which I'm actually going to be putting all of my spools of wire just in here, as well as my chainmail Joe. No, this is American chainmail. My American chainmail, because there's there aren't any bracelets or necklaces in our booth that I can't fix with that. And then this has clasps and uh clip-on earrings and brooch mod er, modifiers and so that'll be that and then we have this other pouch on the back with another zipper so just tons and tons of storage options and it's a very heavy canvas super durable it has um leather reinforced on the uh <sighs> handles and stuff so it's i think i'll probably i don't know put our like card swiper and stuff in here um, and then it also has a little side pouchy here that I'm not entirely certain what I'm going to put in on each side, but we'll see. But yeah, so that's, that's how we're going to be taking our stuff with us because I figure it's got to be at least a little more organized than just throwing it all into a shoebox. So, <laughs> so yeah, we're going to be posting these up in our next shop update. So, oh yeah. Planting the hammer will definitely. Ooh, I might be able to like modify a hole through the bottom and just have it like have the hammer go through uh, one of the side pockets. Definitely going to be fitting mandrels in there as well. But we'll be doing a full breakdown once I have it like perfectly fine tuned. Um, because there's even like a little. Ooh, I'm out of frame, but there's like a little pen holder thing right there that I know I'm going to put my favorite mandrel in. I just know it. So, but yeah, so that's something that we were helping uh, our friends with World of Strange. We're helping us get sorted over our unplugged holiday. Whew, but yeah, so super excited about that. Had to throw dinner on. What are you adding to the site? Those bags? Yup. <laughs> Shameless self-promotion. Which one is this? Let's do this one with the spirals. And we're trying to do this at a size 11, but it came out at a size 10, but that's okay. 
now that I've made a bit of a mess in my excitement. That's okay. So I'm missing a ring. I must have flung it somewhere in the frenzy. Because we had five, didn't we? Oh, let me see if I can find it. Ooh, hey, Droma. Oh, that's such a good idea. Adding some little elastic straps. Um, okay, I got it. Oh, I found it. Dog hair's free. Where'd my chair go? Okay. And I'm back in the chair. Very good. Whew, okay. <laughs> right? And I, I do think so, Sherry. And I also, I'm really bad about spilling stuff on my bags. Like, there's not been a person in existence that has not had my coffee spilled on it. So with it being canvas, it should dry out really nicely, which will be good. Um, I got them on Amazon, I'm pretty sure. They're the Glitter Line. I think that's by Beadalon, but I'm not entirely certain. Like, you can see there on the side it says Glitter Line Patented. Maybe you can see. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I'm going to do this one with the spirals. So just twisting it around. Okay, so doing two inches more per ring was not completely necessary. So again, pair wire is affordable enough that I'm not too worried about it. But if I were using sterling, I would be a lot more accurate about um, how much excess wire. <laughs> Penny Vance's coffee on that color of canvas equals patina. Very much. Good thinking. So just getting that twisted a bit. You gonna be doing a tutorial on this ring today? I think so. Because I mean it's different enough from previous ring tutorials I've done and the other folks have done. Ooh, I can scotch guard it. Oh, that's good thinking. I should definitely get my hands on some scotch guard. Ah. Getting that wrapped around and snipped. And I've got a great big bin here of scrap wire that eventually we will melt down into our own ingots that I hope to one day put through a like a, a mill I think they're called just like mill it out flat and uh either make some of our own wire out of it or just bare copper for making like rings and stuff we'll see Kelly, that's since uh, December, I think was the last time I dumped it out. <laughs> right, Jennifer? Oh, Anna, I, missed, I must have missed the first part of your question. If you were asking me to zoom in, I don't mind a bit. And sometimes if your wires get just a little twisted, you can just cinch them back around again. Ooh, I'm going to keep wearing that one. Okay. So I'm going to be making this one at about 11 and a half to see if that will hold its... Yes. Um, now, YouTube automatically blocks people from posting links, but you can spell out your website, Tushers. Um, so, like, just, like, put a space before the .com or whatever, and that should let it go through. But no, I don't mind a bit. If it's contextual, like, I mean, I don't mind folks who are kind of part of the community here doing it, but I don't want folks who are just, like, 
coming through spamming for their, you know, buy my feet pics. Like, so. Mmm. I'm sure when they do it, it's fine. When I do it, <laughs> <laughs> it's www.squatchfeed.onlyfans.com. <laughs> You behave yourself, young man. Ooh, pasta and meatballs. Yeah, and this one's just going to be the spiral. Yeah, I definitely didn't need to pull off as much wire as what I did, but that's okay. So we've snipped it off. It is. It's a little bit of uh, a tutorial that we've done in the past. It's actually been, I think everybody who's a wire wrapper has a video for it at this point, but um, certainly I was not the first, nor do I ever hope to be the last. Uh, but it's just a little simple spiral ring. Uh, not necessarily rosette in the sense of like uh, we could twist the wires to give it more of a rosette look but right now I am focusing on uh, yeah and even that so you almost want to make it a whole ring size larger than what do you want it to come out at because I started at 11 and a half and now I'm down to 10 and a half mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love it's just so tiny and sleek. Mm, 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 mm. Love it. That was probably my favorite so far. So now we have, and we sell these out of our booth for like five bucks. Just because I need money. <laughs> so it's five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty, five, thirty, thirty-five dollars worth of inventory in an hour. Oh, I need to step in. So. Hmm. That's a really good question, Anna. She says, what size seems to be in most demand? We sell the most of size 9. Now, that was two years ago, though. So, uh, but yeah, typically, like, people, and they always come through and they're like, oh my gosh, my hands are so fat. And I'm like, you're an average adult female. Like, we sell predominantly sizes like 9 and 10. Uh, I may, I try to make a lot at 11 because I can. they can be sized down to just about any size. So, Okay, so let's do the next one. <laughs> oh, Tashers. <laughs> Pro, I don't I don't think you have missed any super durables just yet. <clears throat> okay, so let's get more wire snipped. We're gonna make six more rings. And this is out of Paravire's 20 gauge silver plated silver. Now this one does feel a whole lot softer. That spool of titanium has just been an anomaly. It's 20 gauge, but it's stiffer than the 18 gauge that I've been getting from Parawire. So I don't know what's up. Yeah, but did anyone call super durable? I don't think anyone did call super durable. Um, we are gonna be going and Oh, she did? Yeah. Ah! Well, I missed it. You know, I'm so susceptible to suggestion, Randy. Mm hmm. Exactly, Cherry. And I go by a lot faster when I'm not jibber jabbering. Like, normally I'll put on some, like, Stargate or. Uh, ooh, I've been wanting to rewatch Supernatural, the first, like, five or six seasons of that. Ooh, but we did find it, which is known, so that's good. So, okay, here's six. Very cool. I'm going to set those off to the side. <sighs> Let's see how quick we can get these made. It is 104, like an hour and four minutes. I'm not going to lie. Huh? Six on my screen. Well, uh, the streaming time, because I can't see a clock on my device. Okay, so we're starting at. I don't have a stopwatch. If you want, if you want to time me, that'd be cool. 
Also, hey, Randy. Huh? I'm going. <laughs> if you wanted to come in here and read comments off. Yeah. Uh, you just go sit in there and be antisocial. Yeah. Well, that's fair. New Year, new me. New Year, new me. You're, you've been doing that shit for ages. <laughs> Welcome back, Guinea. Eight-year-old me. Eight -year -old me. <laughs> Oof. Okay. Yeah, this wire is much softer. Ouch. Oh, I stabbed my little thingy. Ouch. You ain't got time to bleed. Keep yeah. <laughs> Randy says, you ain't got time to bleed. Keep going. <laughs> he says, hey, I don't know if you could hear him. It's much softer to work with. My fingers still hurt, though, but that's what I get. So there's one. And certainly, especially when it's in the booth, um, I do not want to compromise quality. Just for the sake of getting stuff made. What were you saying, love? That time? Yeah. One minute and 27 seconds. Wow. Okay, well, I lied to you because I still haven't done the finishing work. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. But, yeah, so about two minutes per ring. That's not terrible. Mm -hmm. oh, so cute. Okay. One. Okay, well, I'm doing another one. Because I was going to try to get the average. I ain't got time to do every single one of them. Well, that's why I had checked in. At the recording time was at a minute four, in, or an hour four, and now we're at an hour seven. Because it took me an hour to do the first six. <laughs> <laughs> Don't pretend like you're not impressed. Ooh, I really like how the spiral on this one's coming out, too. Um, I usually sell these for $5, but if you made them out of sterling silver or, um, I don't know, had, like, value yourself, <laughs> you could sell them for more. But I'm just, like, a cheap huckster. Like, I think Randy would prefer us uh, sell these for $8. Um, but I really like having a high turnover rate because when, when we're at an event... I'm not worried about getting paid per the hour or um, like I'm trying to look at if we come in and it costs us like $500 to be at an event, then I want to make a thousand. And so a lot of that comes from selling very quick, small pieces like this. Um, and so I try to kind of keep it on a big picture perspective. So if somebody comes in and they get a $5 ring, um, they're much more likely to impulse buy. Oh no, I was supposed to do spirals on it. Oh well. Um, they'll, I don't know. And also we kind of sell at a lot of anime conventions where it's like middle schoolers and high schoolers and college kids or like young couples who do not have a bunch of money to be like, you know, spending on jewelry. They usually spend it on like their hotel and the, the, uh, badge fees and food and stuff so it's we're trying to lure people in with impulse buys and then if it keeps them shopping at our booth or it, it kind of spurs an interaction and then we might be able to sell one of the pieces that's like you know 20 or 30 or 50 even so that's why I really like to have a nice a solid foundation of very inexpensive jewelry I remember being freaking broke all the time. I didn't have the money to buy jewelry. That's why I started making it. <laughs> ah, right on. Yeah, we do charge more whenever they have um, beads on them. And oftentimes that'll reflect the, qual the type of bead, like the gemstone that we've used. Okay. Anna says, why your color question? Right now I'm using the titanium to make the triple moon necklaces, but German silver looks like a better match, although it tarnishes. What wire matches? Um, 
I prefer personally the titanium tone because even though it looks just a little bit darker, the silver plated silver I found, um, at least stuff that I had purchased maybe five or six years ago can have a tendency to yellow just a little bit, whereas I've never had that problem on the titanium. A quick flower ring. Um, do you mean where it's like twisted like a rosette? I could try. I'm going to do this one like a spiral before I forget that that's what we're supposed to be doing. Or a three spiral, rather. Uh-oh. <laughs> Excuse me. Not the Rona, just allergies. Mm -hmm. I don't know, honey. Hey, Sabrina. We had a really nice Christmas. It was fun. Um, well, whenever we started doing events, we, we had actually joined our local art center in Lincoln County, um, the Lincoln County, was it the Fayetteville Art League or the Lincoln County Art League? I don't recall, but, um, it's most, Fayetteville, was it Fayetteville? Um, most cities or towns even will have like an art league or something of some sort or the local high school will, will put on like a Christmas craft show or something like that so you can go to your local chamber of commerce and find out if there are any street festivals or anything like that and if there's any vendor applications because I know here in Carthage Missouri where we currently live they put on the maple leaf festival like the chamber of commerce does so that's actually who you have to go through to get because it's a juried art show um like arts and craft show so you would just contact that or you can google craft shows in like let's say nashville or craft shows in birmingham or um just whatever city that you're in just search what type of show you're interested in doing like whether for me whether it's a sci-fi convention or an anime convention or an arts show um i would just google that and then um depending on where you'd like to travel to when we lived in Fayetteville, we loved going to Atlanta and Birmingham and Huntsville and Nashville. Um, we liked going to St. Louis because all of those things were within like a four to seven hour drive from us. And um, and then once we went to those shows, they would have like pin boards kind of or like little uh, promo tables that you could put um, like flyers and stuff on so a lot of the other conventions in that area would put their own um promotional material on that table and i would just go through and just pick up every single one of them and then check out their websites when we got home to see what their estimated attendance was whether it's their first year or their 10th year or like just kind of researching the event and um but yeah so that that's how i'd recommend finding finding shows or uh, vending events to go to. I personally really like indoor vending. Um, so it, like, oh, the NECA, the Northeast Crafters Association. When we were in Huntsville, that was the show to get into because they had an indoor spring one and they had an indoor Christmas one. And I may be remembering wrong, but I'm pretty sure you couldn't do the Christmas one unless you had done their spring show. Um, cause, that's correct yeah. right on um and their christmas show wasn't or their their spring show wasn't bad like at all in fact it was really nice because it was indoors so if you had like finicky march weather uh where it could either be like hot and having tornadoes or cold and having like rainy you know sleet storms um it didn't matter because we were inside which is nice <laughs> i don't know how many times we've come to having our booth like destroyed during the night from wind or rain or just the humidity made a lot of our store-bought displays delaminate from like the leatherette delaminated um but then their christmas show though oh my gosh <laughs> like that was awesome like they they did a really good job of jurying the room so they, they had a good balance of vendors um it was just it was a good show so now, granted, that was, you know, a decade ago <laughs> at this point. Um, there we go. I'm coming in and giving it the old smush.
smushy smush. Hey Verdea, how's it going? Ah, uh, well happy new year to you as well. I hope it's off to a good start. There we are. Well that one's, that actually came out a little larger than it's size 9. But again, I'm really digging these ones with just the petite little, just a little spiral. Very cute. Um, Anna says, do you display your rings by size? We have tried that. But not to be this way, but people are monsters. <laughs> um, we, animals. They're animals. <laughs> um, but no, we, we have like one of those ring displays that has like the creases in the phone that has like the flocking on it. And so if you pretend like my hand is a ring, is the ring display, the ring would go in like boop and it would just sit in there like that. And then across the back, we'd have like these little fake finger shaped things that you'd just slide the like, I mean, they weren't like finger finger shaped, but they were just uh like upright individual ring displays and we would put the rings in there and it's like people would just come through and like face roll all like wow like just demolishing everything there's no rhyme or reason to it so we gave up <laughs> entirely um so yeah we so good luck <laughs> like um is all i can tell you <laughs> Randy said, tell me how you really feel. But no, and honestly, I wasn't that torn up about it, but Randy would go around to the front every chance that we had, um, and he would try to reorganize it and, like, put it back to where it made some semblance of sense. And it's just, nope. <laughs> just, oh, we, we choose our battles, and we've just given up on that one. Now, we do, on the tags that we do, we'll have the size written on one side and the price written on the other. But we also have like a little handwritten note that like sticks up like a <sighs> Wiley Coyote sign that's like, we can, you know, all rings are adjustable unless marked otherwise or like something of the sort. <laughs> and it says, I use trays and people are animals. <laughs> They're my favorite though, like kind of sometimes. Um, <laughs> but uh, no offense other humans, but we're kind of the worst. <laughs> so... And I'm just as bad, like, I'm sure. In fact, I know for a fact that I am, because one time we were in this, like, candy shop, and when we're, when we're on the vending side of a booth, and somebody's like, oh, how much is this? And, like, directly in front of their face is a sign that says $5. But, and we still, we answer and be like, oh, that one's $5. And we'll, like, kind of point at the sign to be like, behold, we anticipated this. Um, but they still ask, and so a hundred times a day, Randy and I will be like, oh, that's five dollars, you know. Um, but then we were at this candy shop, and I was like, ooh, how much are these? There was a sign right in front of my face, like, <laughs> and it goes all the time. Hey, off grid, how are y'all doing? But yeah, so it's, I'm not throwing stones. <laughs> I, too, am just a smooth brain. <laughs> but... Eh. All we can do is try our best, I suppose. <laughs> Anna says, all the time. <laughs> Cherie, I am doing uh, 12 to 14 inches on our rings, and I'm having a pretty generous amount of uh, excess. And I like to do just one stabilization wrap, I think. Hey, Lisa. Welcome home from work. Oh, I'm just making inventory. That's probably, honestly, for the next, like, forever, uh, is probably what I'm going to be working on every Friday. So put your pliers out or whatever it is that you're working on and craft along with me because there's work to be done. Hey, Deanna, how's it going? Ooh, Sharon says, is it advisable to use my liver of sulfur before I use my wire and set the stones? Um, I recommend... <sighs> Depending on the stones, some stones don't get affected by it at all. Um, I recommend checking out Oxana Crafts on her Instagram. She'll show how she does, or she has videos showing how she dips her like frames that she makes, her wire wrap cabochon frames, um, into liver of sulfur and then polishes them and then puts the stones in. But for stuff like this, I would definitely wait until after my wrapping has been done to oxidize it because when you oxidize it and then um, buff off the excess, um, it gives it shows off some. You know, we'll actually do the bare copper next, and we can mix up 
some liver of sulfur and I'll actually show y'all because I think that might be pretty cool yeah oh it is burr cold outside whoop no it won't free I mean I'll do it in here and then I just set it outside yeah it'll freeze you're correct Mm-hmm. April will be here soon. For a second, I was like, who's April? And then I was like, oh, wait, he means the month. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, it is. Yeah, I use um, thermoplastic to make handles for my pliers that I use the most, especially for when I'm doing chain mail. Because, like, uh... Ergonomics are important. <laughs> Witch and Gnome says you make six of each style slash wire wrap. How many rings do you normally have ready for the booth? Um, well, we, jewelry doesn't go bad. The effort I put in now on all of these rings, I mean, unless things go really hopefully well, um... I normally wouldn't have to remake this ring design until like maybe six months to a year from now. Now that was whenever we were vending almost every weekend, but we're going to be making at least 10 different ring designs. So I don't know, math, like a bunch. How much is a, like a bunch, a whole bunch. <laughs> <laughs> um, probably anywhere from 300 to 600 finger rings. Um, and then, and that sounds like a lot, but it's, I mean, you can only sell what you have made in inventory. And this gives us leeway that if we get sick or if my hands hurt, or if we just don't have time, or if we have a couple of shows back to back to back, or, you know, any number of things, it gives us a little bit of a safety net, like a savings almost of jewelry, um, it is. This is my is my drink, which I actually need to drink some of. But yeah, so it's um, it, especially for folks who are wanting to make kind of a living at this, like uh, it, it can really the the more inventory you make the better prepared you're going to be for shows or vending events or online sales or anything like that and it's in this line of work there's not a whole lot of things that we have control over so just trying my best with making quality inventory just as much as possible um was the only thing that i felt like we could really do to set ourselves up for success because it's like you can have the best marketing campaign on the planet but if you only have five things on your Etsy shop well you can only sell five things even if you get a couple hundred people uh, coming through based off of like if you run like an ad campaign or something so it's step one is make the inventory step three profit <laughs> so, um, do you dedicate one space for your rings yes when vending um, we do we have two ring trays that we use for finger rings and we kind of keep them in one section of our booth um and there are some folks that i've seen be, be very successful with having different types of jewelry displayed in different areas like in multiple areas throughout their booth um but i've found uh it can be a little simpler just for Randy and I for restocking. We know that if we display our rings on that end of the booth, then right behind that ring display, we have our back stock of rings. So it's very easy for us. And if we have a helper with us to um, kind of restock that way by putting like with like. And we had worried that it's like, oh, well, what if there's somebody, you know, one person who's really, really shopping for rings and they're like blocking off all the rings to everybody else. And it's like, well, it was more of a problem in our minds than what it turned out to be in reality. Um, hey, Al, uh, Anna, I am using 20 gauge on these rings and I sell these, we sell these for $5 
I feel like we could get away with selling them for 10, but we like a very high turnover rate um, and we often will try to upsell stuff. Uh, so it's like if somebody likes some $5 earrings that we have, they might also get a $10 pendant um, and then we sell the chains out of our booth. And so if they like a pendant, then they might get a chain with it as well. So that's another $5 or they might, you know, see that and be like, oh my God, these are so prices. And that's always the response that we like. It makes, it makes for a very easy conversation with a potential customer if they're like, wow, this is a really good price. And then we can talk to them about how it's handmade and we can refer them to our YouTube channel. And it's just, um, I don't have the personal confidence to be able to stand behind my work charging what Randy feels like we should be charging for it. And I'm not at all saying that he is incorrect in how much he thinks we should be charging. In fact, I think he actually still probably lowballs us quite a bit, but I'm confident for me to be selling these. So if somebody comes through being a pee pee poo poo pants about our $5 finger rings, they can kiss my glow and white. Um, oh, there's gotta be something more polite I can say. Uh, well, they can bugger off, I guess. Um, <laughs> do what? Huh? huh? <laughs> but whereas if I were selling these for like 25 and somebody came through and was being a pee pee poo poo pants, um, I'd be like, yeah, they're probably right. So it's, I do what I need to do to feel confident in my work because that's how I sleep at night and get through my day. Um, but y I'd encourage you to do what you need to do to feel confident in your work and to be getting what you need from your work because it's one thing to do this um like if you just enjoy it but if you're trying to get bills paid you got bills to pay so serious as i totally get how you feel right on terrace's shameless self-promotion oh anna says do you offer quantity discounts i do not <laughs> because we are charging next to nothing for these and uh so but that's also something that it's like um it's like uh wholesale prices for just buying them individually basically hey ivy i am using parawire and this is not sponsored i just really 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 like their stuff and up next we are doing and it only took 20 minutes and I also use Parawire for all of our bear copper as well. Now, Rio Grande has really great bear wire also, but I figure if I'm going to pay for shipping, I may as well just be getting it all from one place. Mm -hmm. mm, Anna says, I've been asked that. And that could be something that's entirely up to you. Um, I've never really, I don't like working for other people. Like, I'm very bad at, like doing what somebody else wants me to is why I'm self-employed honestly is because that way I'm the only one who gets to be mad at me um whenever I don't do what I'm supposed to do but uh I've I've had other artist friends who are very good at like they don't even go out and do shows they just make and sell wholesale to boutiques um, and that way they don't have to do any of the peopling, they don't have to do any of the booth setup, they just make their stuff and wholesale it out in power to them because that's that I mean it, it's an enviable lifestyle but I'm not very good at being accountable to other people I don't feel like like it stresses me out so I'd rather just be the one hounding myself instead of feeling like oh my god I gotta get this thing done that way it's I hope these are good enough for what they've paid for etc etc <laughs> hey Diane, long time no stream for sure. Okay, so this is the bear copper wire, and I'm going to get six of these made two at size seven, two at size nine, and two at size 11, and then we will oxidize them. So, again, if I want it to be a size seven, I'm wrapping at the size eight on our mandrel. Ooh, and this is just buttery soft. Oh my love. My Ooh. And so, first off, if I were to oxidize my wire uh, with liver of sulfur first, um, you know, I guess we could. There's really no reason not to. It just, I feel like it'd be difficult. I'd have a hard time personally putting it, um, I'm just hitting it to flatten out that spiral. <laughs> um, I'd have a hard time fitting all the wire into something to oxidize it, like having a bin like large enough. 
and also just doing like tool marks and rubbing it with my fingers and stuff I feel like I'd have a hard time keeping that oxidation on there Ooh, now it would be totally cool is if we like melted it down to where there was like a little blob on the tip like with a torch because I don't do that with the enameled pair wire just because it cooks the enameling off but on bare copper like this heck yes Anna says I sell more online than it shows hands down uh, used to, we were, we represented the opposite of that, Anna. We sold way more at shows than what we did online, but Rona, um, definitely threw a wrench in the works, and, uh, we were able to roll the punches, fortunately, and, uh, now we sell way more online, um, mostly through our craft along thons and auctions, but I have not been very good about keeping jewelry in stock on our website. But, again, everybody's going to... Don't let anybody else tell you what your productivity and what your success should look like. Because things that work best for Randy and I um, may not may not be conducive to you. Like, even if it's something that's technically on paper successful, if it's sucking the soul out of it for you, find something that makes you happy and money. Um, cause isn't that the dream? Ooh, Sherry asks, where does everyone sell online? Um, well, for us personally, we have a Weebly website, we're putting together a Shopify website, and we have an Etsy. Um, the Etsy and the Shopify are for a new business that we're setting up, but we predominantly go through our main website. Um, and my reasoning for that is just, it's really nice, like whenever uh, Instagram went down last year, we didn't have to worry about it at all. Like, whereas... Some folks that we know who have an Instagram shop were like, we could, we made zero sales today because Instagram went down and they were, it was out of our power. Like, not a thing in the world we can do about it. And I just think the more ways that as business owners and, you know, professional artisans that we can be self-sufficient, uh, just the better. I'm not saying that, you know, we shouldn't depend on other companies and, you know, platforms and stuff, but just I personally really, really like uh, not having to be accountable to anyone, uh, other than y'all, um, and not having to rely on anyone other than y'all. <laughs> Ooh, Tara says commission percentages charged by boutiques are ridiculous. You have to jack up your prices to make what you should, then no one wants to buy it because it costs too much. Um, I agree with that statement 110%. That's why I try to just, if a boutique wants to carry our work, I just sell it to them. That way I've already made my cut and I don't have to worry about if something gets stolen or anything. It just, again, I try to keep my own covered right from the beginning. Uh, now a lot less boutiques are interested in that, which is why I don't do a whole lot of selling out of boutiques, but eh, to each their own. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Rainbow Zebra says, I'm hoping to earn enough to get my own website. Ooh, now I'm sure, um, surely there's got to be free versions, I think, of like, uh, Square and Shopify and things like that. Though I think Shopify puts like a password on it or something. Um, and also there's not a thing in the world wrong with having an Etsy or a Facebook market pay marketplace page or an Instagram shop or something like that as well. Hey Brooke, how's it going? Ooh, ooh, size seven. Nice. I'm gonna whack it. Yes. Oh, I love that because it just flattens it right out. Makes me so happy. Um, I use Weebly and Shopify that are like, uh, I think we tried to go through GoDaddy once and I, I didn't much care for their user interface, I think is, I don't know, there was some reason that I was like, Ugh. I think I just didn't like calling it Daddy, <laughs> but that's just me. Ooh, um, Witch and Gnome says we still need to get a logo design figured out. Any recommendations on where or who to check out? Um, Radiant Gray is the company name it's nick and melissa they are just the coolest folks and they uh digitized our logo 
for us. Now I don't know what he's up to currently but if you could find them just like google radiant gray um and you'll be able to find like either their facebook or instagram or website um and contact them and be, see if they're open to any custom work for logo uh but they've got a super cute design very easy and fun to work with he's a real professional and uh i highly recommend them made with real professional tasha says i found out there's just so much abuse that took place in regular jobs when i work for me i just try hard to not abuse myself yeah <laughs> pretty much Oh, my thingy hurts. Right, Brooke? Yep, Radiant Gray, just spelled just like that, I'm pretty sure. Ooh, Tara says, has Etsy continued their nonsense? I got two sales in the middle of the night last night. Only time I don't mind notifications at 1 a.m. is when I hear ka-ching. Um, since Etsy started pulling their uh, required to use their marketing and that tent associated fee and stuff. I have not used Etsy. Now we have set one up for Compass Rose Planner Co. because I wanted to re-experience that, um, but I haven't listed any products yet other than like, uh, like a $5 sticker um, that I think I've actually pulled because the sticker paper that I have wasn't working right. So, um, let me snip this wire. So that remains to be seen. I actually think they're, the way that they're doing it might be beneficial for new shops. Um, again, I don't like being charged 20 cents every time I want to post something. Like, I understand they've got to, you know, make their money, but it's also, I just feel like, um, it just feels like they're trying to fleece you at every turn. Oh, I love these rings. Um, but again, I just, oh, and I've done none of these with the side spirals. Come on, Vaughn. We can do this. Get your life together. <laughs> Tara. Um, oh, Kelly says, what did you say not to expose to the rubber jump rings? Vegetable-based oils. It'll hold up to yogurt. It'll hold up to pudding. It will not hold up to extra virgin olive oil. <laughs> hey, Drax Puppy Snuggles, you say? Is that not 20 cents for three months? Um, It's whenever we post something for sale up on our Etsy shop, at least the way I understand it, is if I sell it and it's something like, one of our digital templates that I have set to automatically relist, it charges me another 20 cents. So it's every single time one of our $1 uh, templates would sell, 20 cents of it went just to the relisting fee, plus, you know, um, Etsy's other associated fees that they take uh, whenever you sell something through them. Now, granted, that being said, we have similar fees that we have to pay anytime we do process a payment through PayPal or through Square, but it's just, <sighs> yeah, and again, fact check me because it's been a little bit and I might just be, my perception and memory might be skewed by my deep loathing, uh, so I am not, um, I'm not certain on that. I just remember that being what we were experiencing. But that's also why we don't list our $1 templates anymore. Because um, even though, yeah, it is digital, it's like whenever I charge a dollar for something, I'm hoping to get the full dollar, not, you know, 60 cents of it after all the fees. Hey, zombie, how's it going? Sherry says, I was watching you when you were upset talking about how you didn't like Etsy for what they were doing. And, you know, and it still gets me riled up um, just because, like, <sighs> all of the sales we were doing through our Etsy were a direct, like, result of us hosting our auctions and then me sending a link to folks to purchase their auction items through Etsy. Um just because a lot of customers trust Etsy and I like to, you know, take advantage of that. Like if folks, if I were on some sort of platform that people were like, um, are you sure they're not going to like steal my info? Like that's not good for business. Um, 
but they were going to take whatever percentage of each of those sales as a result of like something I couldn't opt out of with them being like, well, we showed ads and somebody clicked on your page earlier in the month. So that must have been a result of the ads. And it just... Yeah, if they had Googled us and found us through an Etsy ad instead of just following the link. Um, and it just didn't seem very transparent about how they were going to be able to prove that that person came in through uh, on... It's just, I don't know. And I didn't like well, not being able to opt out that, of it. The thing that bugged me about it was we could prove, yes, they came to our shop to buy this thing from the link. Mm -hmm. But what we can't prove is sometime in the past 30 days, they clicked on the uh, Etsy link mm -hmm. from the Google search. Yep. And so for the next 30 days, anything they buy from our shop, they're going to take a percentage of and we can't opt out of that. Yeah. So, yeah, that's why I got my panties in a twist about Etsy. But... Yes. Exactly, Penny. You say it so much better than I do. Ooh, and that's how it looks with the little side spirals. But there's a pokey bit, so I'm going to burnish it some with my plier tips until there's no more pokey bits. Rainbow Zebra says, I have to make inventory, but then I'll see how Etsy works for me. Right on. And I wish you good luck. There's a lot of folks who are very successful over on Etsy, so... Again, just because I get all up in a tizzy about it, do not think for a second that, like, you can do very well there. Don't think for a second that you can't. And that's, um, if I could give any advice, both to y'all as well as my myself, um, is to, you don't have to do everything all at once. Um, and that's something that I was completely overwhelming myself with, with the uh, Compass Rose Planner Co. starting that business is I was like, in one day, I was trying to put together the Facebook page, the group, the Instagram, the website, the Etsy. And I was like, do we set up another YouTube channel for it? It's like, and I, I scaled all of it back. So we just have the Facebook page and group uh, for our social media. And then we have the Etsy and the website, which the website, I still can't figure out how to get it to show up on Google searches, but we at least still have our Etsy. But I, the website I was just putting together for um, a newsletter. That way we could kind of get a mailing list put together because um, I feel like with a mailing list, you don't have to bow and cater to some algorithm that can change on a whim. You can just get the emails of the people who are interested in getting emails from you and go from there. Tara says, you're going to burn out. Ah, uh, Randy keeps feeding my fire. We'll do good. In the Compass Rose Planner Co. is, uh, it's, I'm not diminishing it by calling it a pet project, but it is definitely a pet project. It's something that's keeping me inspired and excited. And it's also a project for here on the main channel. I'm documenting the whole process of setting up a new business. That way I can share the steps with y'all. Because, man, I keep coming across these predatory coaching programs that are like, spend $100 on our coaching program and we'll teach you how to make bajillions on Instagram. And it's like, I don't think that's how this works. And then it's, you, ugh, it's, they keep being very, very vague about like the actual, like they keep selling the dream, but not telling you the steps to make that dream into a reality. And I want to help y'all as much as possible without charging you anything, except for your time being here with me, um, to like hear you know, hear or read what we have to talk about. I want to help you guys to be as successful as you want to be without charging you a hundred freaking dollars for a fake coaching program. Um, so that's just my two cents on it. Step one, gather underpants. <laughs> um, some people sell through Instagram. It's not optimized for it, but people make it work with DMs and PayPal. And email. They do. I've seen a lot of folks be very successful at that, Brooke. <laughs> oh, well, thanks, Anna. All right on. Bye, off-grid. I hope y'all are doing really well. But, um... 
honestly uh the first video segment because i didn't know if i should do it as separate video segments or just have it be one really long kind of seminar and i think we're probably going to go the seminar route because i'd like to be able to deliver all of the information in context to itself um just in one spot because i don't want to take up more of your time than necessary but the step one is plant the seeds of your community because 110 percent there's no way randy and i would have been able to get through rona or anything without you guys our community and it's y'all are what keeps us inspired whenever it gets to feel like a little bit of a drudge um like whenever my fingers hurt or you know just anything like that step one is plant the seeds of your community and then actually water it like engage and not this oh, this is what the algorithm wants you to do, so engage like this. It's like, no, engage in a genuine way that you enjoy because if you don't enjoy it, it's not going to thrive. Like, the plant will grow, but it won't thrive. Um, and what you want is a very solid, healthy, genuine rootstock that your business can grow out of. And so with Compass Rose Planner Co., that's what we're doing. There's only like 30 of us over uh, on the Compass Rose Planner Co., Facebook page and uh, I took an unplugged holiday so we're just starting to get back into it but even like y'all were doing so good like over there like folks were posting pictures of their own planners and being and, like engaging with each other and like just it's it's wonderful to get to see folks who are interested in something come together and it doesn't have to be big to be successful because I am just a seedling here too. So I don't need more than 30 people in a group because I've never run a freaking Facebook group before. And so by starting out small, it's we can grow together and just see where it goes. But um, like, it's, I don't know. So it's, I, I'm excited about it. But um, it, and that's the same thing that happened with our business here is I was posting a video a day for almost a year before Adam Savage shared my dragon eye painting tutorial, um, which really, woo, that wasn't Miracle Grow. I don't know what was. Um, and then George Takei shared our wire wrapped dragon eye bracelet video. And that was another burst of Miracle Grow. And it kind of, it not that it got out of hand, but it was definitely more than we could manage. And it was a little overwhelming. And while it was wonderful, um, sometimes small and slow growth can be better. So... And of course, at the time, we had no idea that that was going to happen. So I wasn't documenting anything other than just, hey, guys, this is another YouTube video. And so <laughs> Penny says, God, there's a Facebook page now, too. Yeah, um, it's just Compass Rose Planner Co. The page and the group are, like, linked. Um, oh, hey, Lisa. Yeah, this isn't quite a tutorial as much as it is a, um, I'm making inventory for our booth. So we're, like wire wrap until my fingers bleed uh, but I am using 20 gauge wire and about 12 to 14 inches of it and I have a tutorial already on this simple spiral ring but I'm going to be doing a tutorial for uh, the triple spiral ring as well oh Elijah I'm so glad it's going well for you Sabella and Iris are the greatest they really are <laughs> ah anna says i've checked parawire and everything i want to order is out of stock i mean what is going on with them i know they just moved i think they're actually still in the transition of moving you may want to check on some of their older uh social media posts from the past like month month and a half uh they were giving some forewarning about this because i think they cleared out their stock for moving again I'm not associated with them at all and this is all just me kind of presuming so I'm probably wrong but if I were them I would sell as much of my stock as I could so it's less to have to move because I think they're going from what New Jersey to North Carolina I have no idea how far of a drive that is but it can't be easy or cheap to move your entire business states um and I don't know if they're up in producing again and I don't know how long that will, will be. So it's probably, it's an uncharacteristic dry spell for them. So uh, hopefully they'll be up and running again though, because I'm getting low on some wire and twitchy. 
Hey, Peace Wolf, how's it going? Ooh, I don't like how that one looks. I'm going to leave it just like that, I think. It's getting to wire from Parawire. Michael's, Michael says stop selling it. Oh, goodness. Yeah, we should have, I had placed a huge, huge order as soon as I found out, and it still hasn't arrived, but it um, should be on the way. And so we, I, I can't promise anything, because again, I'm kind of hoarding my own wire stash, because we, we use them to fulfill our Happy Crafter booty box subscriptions, because um, we put wire, pair of wire into each of those at our $20, 30 40 and $50 membership levels. Um, our $10 folks just get some glass cabs and wood cuts and stuff, but. Right on, Zebra. Will you take care of yourself? Ooh, right on, Tara. But, uh, I'm hoping that if we have quite a bit, we might be able to post some Parawire up on our website for sale. But, um, again, I don't know how long it'll be and I've got to make this wire last for our subscription kits. Okie dokie, it is liver of sulfur time. Hey, Wendy. Ah, it's seven o'clock, he says. Okay, well, I'm gonna show it just real quick because it does not take long. Okay, I'll be right back, y'all. Oh, my knees, good gravy. Uh, no, I don't know how the chemicals on those from the acidity of the, uh, what's this? What are you? I think this is, maybe there might be some chopsticks in my purse. Okay. So this is baking soda that all the water evaporated out of and it has some like tree in it. But I'm just, that's just some tap water that I've poured into it. The baking soda will neutralize the liver of sulfur. <laughs> hey, I found a, well, it's got stuff on it. Hmm, how rough I say? You can always trust your hoarding. Oh, hashtag hoarding. I've been, I don't steal chopsticks from the you restaurant we go to. <laughs> do, I, do what? You just don't give them back. Well, Mana gives them to me. Oh, yeah. Randy doesn't use chopsticks, so I always take the chopsticks from the store. But, so, this is liver of sulfur. It smells like stinky poo, -poo butts. Um, don't eat it. Boop. Just a little drop. Don't get it in your eyeballs and don't eat it. So, I'm going to... I just use the baking soda solution to neutralize it. I use it to neutralize my pickle as well. It's probably way more baking soda. I really hope that's baking soda. I'm pretty sure it is. It'll be fine. Okay. So for this one, isn't that stick cool? I don't know. 
There's another one over there that has like a bluish tinge to it, and I have no idea what that had in it. Oh god, it smells like yeah, sulfur. <clears throat> so, Hot egg butt. smells like what? Hot egg, Hot egg butt. That's true, my love. So I'm gonna use just a little piece of scrap wire to, and this has been enameled. Yeah, liver of sulfur does not work on. And I'm going to leave one out that way we can compare. But yeah, liver of sulfur does not work on enameled wire. It will only oxidize the tips where it has been. Um, oh God, I keep breathing it in. <laughs> it does. Okay. So already you can see how quickly that activates and is turning these from bright, beautiful copper to really, really dark oxidized copper. And then you can just dip it in. Don't dip it in your coffee. Oh no. Yeah, usually if I'm doing this with like a gemstone or something, um, oh, I guess I could have just used like some regular water as well. I'll rinse it with my, okay. And then I'm just gonna rinse it with my drink water. There we go. Totally jank, but it works. And I got a tissue here. And then I actually, all of this, um, I'll oxidize. Usually I try to have a whole batch of copper that needs, um, Bill Nye would kick me out of the lab. Um, but uh, I just used it a whole bunch on a whole bunch of different copper pieces. And then I set it on the porch to let it just stink itself out. And then I dump it on the compost heap. Okay, so this is it pre-oxidation, and this is it post-oxidation. And the oxidizing can leave a little bit of a residue on your hands, which is why I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing it um, before wire wrapping, just for not having to have little marks all over my hands. I'm going to go set this on the porch because it literally smells like a butt. Okay, so now what are we going to do? Ooh, my favorite, a little pokey steel brush. And you could totally use a Dremel tool, but I don't really feel like making loud noises. And then just gonna snip this. And we would take these off and then I don't want to be scratching up my aluminum mandrel. So I have my stainless steel mandrel, which is heavy enough to be a weapon, I think. And then I just come through. And you could use steel wool as a thing I've seen people use. Because this kind of leaves a whole lot of scratches, but you can polish it back up. And so there you can see, it really brings out the, um, oh, oh, Katrina, that's such a good idea. She says, I think I saw someone put patina solution for silver in one of those watercolor blending brushes. It works great. I don't know if liver of sulfur would work the same. I think, um, if you mixed it and then put it in and kind of used it up, because it's after a couple of days, it loses its potency, um, and it might not even take a couple of days. So here you can see a before and after on the patina on these. And now also, maybe we can just come over here for a second. Oh my gosh, there's so much stuff in the way. So these guys are the little Dremel tips that I put in polishing stuff on there. Different grits. Like this one is a 600 grit. The dog hair is always free. 
um, this one is a 220, so I would put this on the steel mandrel and have it in my Dremel and just go through and kind of polish it up. That would be quite loud, so I'm not going to do it right now. Um, but yeah, so... Ring clamps. I really miss metal working. <laughs> like a metal sniffing. Ooh, what's this? Oh, this bad boy had a rough time in the electroform bath. I think the bath was too cold. You can also come through... This is some 1,200 grit sandpaper. Ooh, what about alcohol ink? Um, Tara, I think it has, like, I don't think the right term is a half-life, but it does break down, and I don't know. That's why oftentimes you'll find it in gel form or in, like, dried chunks, but uh, I, I'm, I don't know. Um, I don't know how the alcohol inks, you probably have to seal them. I'm not entirely certain how they would hold up just on bare metal. Ooh, right on Penny. <laughs> Tracks. <laughs> but yeah, so I really love the look of oxidized, a big sausage fingers, of oxidized copper, but it really shows, it really pops. Ooh, and then you can also take barrel guys like this and just do your own strips of um, sandpaper in whatever grains that you like, or grits, and then you can come through and just take off the high points with those as well. And we're back over here. But yeah, so again, here is a, and you can see that dirtiness on my fingers just from that little bit that we've done. That's bare copper, that's it oxidized, and that it is it polished again. So it really brings out the, um, <laughs> right on Penny. <laughs> but it really brings out the kind of depth and highlights and stuff. And we could go through and get this back up with actually properly polishing to a very high sheen. But that is that, which, gosh, how much did we get done? 18 finger rings in two hours but yeah doing this on the mandrel saves my fingers because these little metal brushes hurt y'all any leather work in the future i sure hope so i have to be working on some today oh well, this week i don't know if i'm gonna be able to fit it in today um which we're doing an after party y'all which i've got to let y'all go that we can go get prepped up for the after party. We are actually at a complete and total shortage of kiln paper, so I don't know if I'm gonna be loading the kiln tonight. We'll see. Um, we might just make some more rings and then hang out some more. So we'll see how it goes in the after party. If you're in our one dollar and up Happy Crafter Club, be sure to keep an eye um, for the streaming link. We'll be sending that out. I've always enjoyed your videos from Chainmail Wire Wrapping Palm. All right, on Eve. Well, I'm really glad you like what we do. Mm. Hey guys, Vanna, I've learned so much from you in a short time. A while back, you offered the moon shapes, and I ordered a couple of them, but never got them. Oh no! Um, if you could send us an email, uh, Rick at factorthcreations at yahoo.com, and if you have any information like order number or even just the name and date that it was placed under, we can help you track that down. Um, so hopefully, we'll be able to help you out with that. After party. Oh yeah. Uh, it wasn't much, but did they get sent and were lost, or is there a delay in mailing? Um, yes, an, an email would be perfect. <laughs> oh, we're glad to have you here, Penny. But, and that goes for everybody, too. Like, if through the holiday rush and everything, if y'all ordered something and it didn't arrive, or something was broken, or something was missing, please contact us and let us know, because we can't fix it and make it right if we didn't know that something went wrong. So I will see y'all in the after party and hopefully we'll have a tutorial up by Sunday. If not, we'll see y'all on Monday for the shop update. So <laughs> we'll see you guys there. So until next time y'all, happy crafting. Mwah! Bye. <laughs>